Hello and welcome to The Journal, I'm Steve Kendall. One Book BG returns to the Bowling Green community again this year. And we're joined this uh, evening for Journal by Stacy Higgins from BG City Schools, Michelle Rogers from St. Aloysius Schools, and Maria Simone from the Wood County District Public Library. I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, Stacy, talk a little about One Book BG, because we, you were on last year, we had an, an, an author here, but talk a little about the background, the history, and, and how it came about, and, and some of your partners as well. Sure. Uh, One Book BG got started about 10 years ago. It was the brainchild of a few teachers at Kenwood Elementary uh, wanting to bring our community together. And over the years, the program has evolved greatly. We now include all of our non-public schools. So it is truly one community, one book. Um, this year, however, instead of just one book, we actually have one author we're featuring mm -hmm. and several books right. by him. Yeah. And, and the, the, we can talk about the series, but I was looking online, is, is it Jerry, Pol, is it Pilata? Pilota? Pilota, Pilota. And, and it's a whole series of books called Who Would Win? And he also has an alphabet series too, which is kind of interesting, that as well. Um, talk a little bit, so, you know, so for 10 years, so when you go to select the author, how do you go about doing that? What group gets together and says, oh, let's do this, or this looks like the right person, this looks like the right title, et cetera? I think Michelle oh, would do okay. a great yeah, job sure. explaining oh, that yeah, for you. Yeah, no. of course. Yeah. Well, Typically, the committee selects a book. However, mm -hmm. this year, Maria mm -hmm. has Jerry coming for an author visit, and she said, what if we use his book, and then we tie it in with the author visit? And we thought that oh, was a okay. great idea. Sure. Um, and because he has so many mm -hmm. books available in the Who Would Win series, um, the committee selected two books per grade level. And so okay. each grade level voted between those two books. Oh, um, okay. So that way, all of the for example, my first graders are reading the same book, the um, mm -hmm. Who Would Win Polar Bear, Grizzly, Grizzly. Bear. Okay. So everybody across the whole Bowling Green community of that grade reads we'll the read same book. book. And it gives them ownership too, because they got sure. to vote which book they sure. wanted. Um, and then the winner is the one that was selected mm -hmm. for that. Um, for that grade level, so I, and they're, they're nonfiction books this year, which is new. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's just a really great learning experience, and it gives kids more variety, even within their families, to talk with each other. And um, so the committee did a great job of selecting those, and we thank Maria for mm -hmm. yeah. tying this in with the author visit. Yeah. Now, when you when you look at these books, now there are all these different titles, uh, elementary grades. So each each grade selects its own book. They vote on it. Um, were you surprised by any of the selections? Like, oh, we thought the first graders would go for this book versus of the two you offered them, or, or did they, yeah. What, what made you choose those two books for them to look at? Um, I, mm -hmm. I wasn't on that committee. Oh, okay, all for, right. We, okay. we had a committee that picked mm -hmm. two per grade. Okay. Um, so, do you, were you on that? Really, yeah. it, it okay. was yes. a, a true toss up. And okay. literally we went through, he has such an extensive list, mm -hmm. we went through the order from top to bottom to ah. make it easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> you look at some of the titles, and I, we've yeah. got them laid out here, and I know the, the, the director won't be thrilled by the concept, but for instance, it's, uh, you know, Falcon versus Gavilon, and there's Hawk versus Falcon, and there's Rhino versus and that's Hippo. Mm -hmm. in, in Spanish. In Spanish, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, which I did a terrible job of just pronouncing <laughs> all of those. But you look at some of these, and the yeah. thing that I noticed about them was they're very informative, yes. and they but they get into things that I don't think about because I know the one in here talks about. Uh, elephant seal versus walrus, and it talks about how different animals have different noses or they have mm -hmm. tusks, and then it goes on to explain in a very clear and yet entertaining way uh, why they develop that way or how they use those and, and that sort of thing. Because your first thought is, well, who would win? And it's like, oh, we've got a battle going on, but it's, that's kind of woven in a very subtle way through it, and yet it's, it's an incredibly educational thing. Now, uh, when you looked at some of the other, what made you choose this series this year when you guys sat down to do it? It's very yeah. popular. Okay. It's ah, okay. very All popular. Right. Kids mm -hmm. love animals sure. and they like kind of competition. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's just a really nice mashup between two mm -hmm. animals and then a compare and contrast kind mm -hmm. of experience. And, um, and because it's sort of a competition, it adds that extra element of mm -hmm. excitement yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort dynamic of a, gives people I, Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought was interesting too because some of the some of the names were well. Some of the, the selections were kind of interesting in terms of who he had versus who. I mean, they had right. green ant versus army ant right. and things like that. Right. And I, I just thought it was really interesting. And yet, when you open those up, you can see where at at elementary level, how how well done it is in terms of getting the information across, and yet 
very, you know, because we're talking a lot of biology here and right. a lot of things like that. Right. I mean, coyote versus uh, dingo was a discussion of is that fur or is that hair right. kind of a right. thing. Not right. something that even I would think about, like, oh, you right. saw the dog's got fur on it and, or whatever. And kids yeah. like details. So, yeah. yeah. And they are sponges mm -hmm. for new information and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so they're just eating these books up. And because they're mm -hmm. fairly straightforward and um, succinct, um, just two animals, it kind of gives them the appetite for another book and mm -hmm. another book yeah. and another book. So they get the concept and then they want, we're really hoping that they want to read sure. a whole lot more. And then maybe do some more research themselves mm -hmm. on the, the polar bear or the grizzly right. bear or who else would be because they're not necessarily animals that would find themselves in the wild together. Yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's I just mean, put them together. Put them together <laughs> and 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 construct that. Uh -huh. And I know there's also dinosaur-related things yes. as well, which we know kids just love oh, that yeah. kind of stuff. But I just thought, yeah, when I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, look at these titles; they're really incredible. Made me want to read the books. And I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> right, they're not good. necessarily aimed at my age group, well, but okay. Well, you know, we can all learn a lot from exactly. children's books. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I, when I was just leafing through some of the examples, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't uh -huh. know that about that right, animal. Right. And I, I think. That that's the intriguing thing. And I, I think it's, as you said too, Maria, it's, it makes kids want to find out more about it. And it gets them interested, in, you know, because we're talking basically science here in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always hear that, well, kids aren't, don't like science. They don't mm -hmm. like math. Oh, this gets them it. into the science they part of it, it in a way that, that makes it intriguing uh -huh. for them and entertaining. Um, now, uh, Michelle, when you, when you take this into the classroom and you're going to do this the day that, that he's here, um, what is that like typically? How do you construct that day for your students when you say, okay, we're going to do, here's the one book BG, here's how this rolls out. So how does that work in your classroom? Well, the concept of one book BG is to try and have them read these at home with their okay. families. Mm -hmm. So they take them home, they read them with the families, and typically when the teacher gets the book the very first day when we're giving them the book, we show them the book, we might read a page or two of the book to ah. just kind of pull them in, get mm -hmm. you know whet their appetite, and then they take it home and read it at home. Mm -hmm. And then to encourage them to keep um, reading, we have tell me Tuesday, teach me Thursday, questions oh. on our announcements, mm -hmm. if they can write the answer to that prompt, they get a, get to put their ticket in a raffle box and have a chance to win a prize. Oh, so okay. we have that as an incentive for them mm -hmm. to continue reading. Yeah. And then we also did, before we gave them the books, we did predictions with them, and they got to predict, and we have those displayed, so when the author comes, he sees their predictions hanging up, oh, and wow. can see you know, what yeah. they thought before, and how do they think afterwards. Yeah, not bad. Well, we come back, we're gonna talk more about this, because there's a lot of things to cover here. Um, and I always find it interesting, when I, when I look at these books, and I look at the concept, uh, obviously the idea, as you just said, is to bring not just the, the children into this, but to bring their families in, and make reading a family yes. thing again. So back in just a moment with the folks from One Book BG here on The Journal. Back in a second. Thank you for staying with us on The Journal. We're talking about One Book BG and we're joined by Michelle Rogers from St. Aloysius School here in Bowling Green, Stacy Higgins from BG City Schools in Crim Elementary, I believe, mm -hmm. and also Maria Simone from the Wood County District Public Library. Uh, Stacy, talk about all of the stakeholders involved in this, because we've talked about the kids, touched on the families a little bit, but it's a, sure. it's a much bigger picture than that. It is, and this year we have had overwhelming community support. Mm -hmm. You know, COVID did a number on many things mm -hmm. in our schools, and One Book BG was one of those. Sure. We went to an all online offering at one point, mm -hmm. then um, due to finances, we were restricted to one book per family rather oh. than one book per student. Mm -hmm. And when this opportunity was presented to us by the library, with these books that we know the students just love. We really made a commitment that we wanted to return to the true mission of the program of one book per child. And so we went to our community and they have responded overwhelmingly. We have received a number of corporate donations as well as even five and, and ten dollar checks from families huh. to help make sure that we had enough books mm -hmm. for one for every child in our community, yeah. which has been just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a great partnership with local businesses where we call them our mission stops. Mm -hmm. Now in the past there were trivia questions that students could go around to businesses to answer. That doesn't really work when there's so many different books sure. being offered. Mm -hmm. So instead, we have posters that align with first the books that we used, but then just this weekend, because they were so overwhelmingly popular at our businesses, we mm. refreshed and have 14 new posters at oh. our local community partners 
where students simply go in and put a sticker on which animal they would pick to win. And already I was overwhelmed by the number of my students that came mm -hmm. in today with new tickets. Mm -hmm. They go into a business, they vote, they get a little ticket to bring back for these same raffle boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, community donations for those raffle boxes have been wonderful as well. Our school PTOs, as well as partners such as Call of the Canyon Cafe, to Waddington Jewelers, Tropical Smoothie, you name a downtown or, or local mm -hmm. Bowling Green business, they've had some part in this program this year. Yeah. Now, about how many students are we talking in terms of the, n the number? Because you have a book for every student. So what's what's a ballpark on that? We ordered over 2,000 books. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's a significant, yeah, that's a yes. chunk. Yes. Um, and, and it's interesting. So when people walk into these businesses, they can see this. And so now they can kind of figure out, oh, that's what that's about yes. if they don't know already. Um, uh, when you when you talk to the parents after this is over and the, and the families and the people are involved, um, what what's their response? So obviously, you've been doing it for a number of mm -hmm. years. You said, yeah, COVID made it dip for whatever because it's a little difficult to do this virtually the way yes. there's still good stuff about face to face. Um, what's usually the response when this? And I don't know if Michelle or whoever would like to talk about that. Yeah, well, I think that the parents. Mm -hmm. like the fact that we're motivating their child to read yep. and the fact that it's a family time um, mm -hmm. event. You know, they're reading it yep. together as a family and they appreciate us, especially this year, being able to give them a book um, for them to have at home, read together and incentives with the prizes at school. Mm -hmm. The children see that you know, they're stretching their brains and learning and gives them opportunities to have, you know, supper time discussions on the yeah, animals yeah. in the book. Well, and, and that's a good point because we always hear you know, that people don't have time to sit down now in the, you know, this family structure mm -hmm. you talked about. And this is a way to kind of pull people together and make it a reading event, which we know that reading is the core of everything that we do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so it touches all of those different bases. And, uh, and yeah. families are, you know, traveling around the community together mm -hmm. to go to these you different say, oh. mission stops. So one, the library is one of the mission stops. So yeah. it's really fun to see the families come in together and to make decisions about who's going to win. And, mm -hmm. you know, because you can like look at a picture and say, well, based on this picture, I think this animal would win. But then we say, well, you have to really open up yeah. the book and, and read it and get that information too. So it's, it's, it's yeah. quite stimulating for, mm -hmm. for these um, families to yeah to move around together and see different businesses. Well, and, and that's like a good a treasure point. hunt. Sure, yeah, and, and besides we just talked about, you know, within the family uh, group itself, but now we're talking, as you said, the whole community, yes. it mm -hmm. reaches through all of those different pieces, whether it's businesses, people getting together to do this mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, mm -hmm. as kind of a group get together as well. Um, we had a situation yeah. with one of the businesses had like a bit of water damage, and mm -hmm. one of the things that was damaged was their poster, uh, and they called immediately to say, okay. our poster's, you know, yeah. damaged, and I thought, do you have more problems to worry about with a flood in your business? But they knew and that that's what their customers were coming in yeah. to see. And um, yeah, yeah, so Rock'em Sock'em was wonderful with, yeah. you know, saying, we need that poster as soon as you can get it. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's, well, that's, yeah, right. which, which speaks to how exactly. important, how, they, how much people value it. Exactly. Um, and I know there's no way to really quantify this, but is there any way to say, I mean, you look at this and go, okay, you got kids involved reading. Can you see, I know it's, you can't quantify it obviously, but you probably get the feeling that this does help them then with their other their other coursework and, and it gets them into the reading mode where maybe they wouldn't have been as incented before to do it. We really think this year we're going to see that mm. exponentially more than we ever have in the past okay. because this being an information book and mm -hmm. nonfiction, right. and we know that something our students sometimes struggle to know how to navigate, how to ah. switch mm -hmm. from reading for fun to reading to learn. Mm -hmm. And these books are set up in such a way that they are learning while they're exploring and having mm -hmm. fun, mm -hmm. and they can then translate those skills that they're they're navigating through the table of contents and text features like text boxes and headings and subheadings and diagrams. They'll be able to apply that to then their classroom learning as well. And I was gonna just yes. say like over the years, you know, we have such a variety of books that we read. So, you know, as, as she said, with it being nonfiction, that's a whole new dynamic. But like, for example, the, mm -hmm. the one last year and other ones in the past, they learn different writing styles. Oh, and yeah. even with first mm -hmm. graders, I saw them take some of those hints and I took some hints after the author mm -hmm. visit on ways to try creative writing with them. So I think that it also improves their creative writing skills sure. too. Yeah. 
Yeah, because and you don't, oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry, Maria, go ahead. I'm just very excited at the library. The timing of this is really good because mm -hmm. it's the, sort of towards the end of the school mm -hmm. year as we're going into the summer when the summer reading program at the library is really important mm -hmm. to, you know, to catch the kids. And, and, play and keep yes. them through right, the summer and keep, right. them, yeah, keep that, uh, that learning process that going. That momentum going, yeah, 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 that we don't want to have that learning loss. So the yeah. library positions themselves as, okay, yeah. here we are, it, you know. And, and you're right, the timing is, and yeah, you're right, I thought about that too, that it does, it provides that continuum, gets mm -hmm. so they're, they're they're not necessarily feeling like they're in school, but they're still learning, and right, when they come back, right. they're, they're better prepared. Um, and it's an interesting point you make because, yeah, I know that when we did this the last time, um, it was a it was a non or it was a fiction book, yes. um, and it was very entertaining. And I, and I try to remember the author, but it was about a house. Yes, and the house uh, that wasn't there. The house that wasn't uh -huh. there. And I think what's interesting here is these are done in a way that it doesn't feel like you're, I mean, obviously uh -huh. it's not a textbook. Uh -huh. You get all of that information, but it's rolled out in a story form right. that makes you feel like you're really right. reading a story, not, oh, I'm looking at a, you know, the biology book on, right. yeah, that kind of thing. So I think that's the incredibly good part of it. Right. Um, when we come back, let's talk about the artist, of the uh, author event that's going to take place and how that's going to roll and what people are going to be allowed to do and, and that sort of thing because that's a big part of this too, actually meeting the author and, and the interaction with, uh, in this case, uh, uh, the gentleman that's going to be coming in. Back in just a moment, we're talking about One Book BG here on The Journal. Thanks for staying with us here on The Journal. Our guests are uh, Michelle Rogers from St. Aloysius School here in Bowling Green. Uh, Stacy Higgins from BG City Schools and Crim Elementary, and then Maria Simone from the Wood County District Public Library. And Maria, uh, obviously a big part of this is when the author comes to town and interacts with people who have been reading the books, now they get to meet the author. So kind of unroll how that's going to take place well, and what's going to happen. We're very excited and, and um, he's, he's going to be at the library first mm -hmm. on Sunday, May 14th okay. at 2 o'clock in our atrium. It will be very crowded so we're excited about that. Um, he, he will come in and he'll do a presentation and he'll be able to also sign books oh, okay. and, and he will have some books for sale mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So um, he's written the Who Would Win series which is so popular mm -hmm. but he's also written a lot of other as you say right. alphabet books. Yeah. So he's done a tremendous amount of research. It's going to be really fascinating yeah. to hear him talk about how he does his research on so many different topics and um, how he goes into the field to do mm -hmm. that. We're hoping that kids you know have a lot of questions for him but um, Sunday May 14th is the first presentation he's going to do and that's for the public at the library at 2 o'clock it's Mother's Day uh, so yeah. I tease people and say well after you have your <laughs> Breakfast yeah. in bed. You know? Stop on out. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. to the library. Yeah. Two o'clock. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we're really excited to to mm -hmm. share him there, and then he's going to be able to visit all the different schools okay. um, yeah. on t Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So the children will um, be able to I interact with him mm -hmm. um, in an assembly at each school. Yeah. So now, yeah. now Stacy, when he when he comes to Crim, what's sort of the game plan for that that day? <laughs> Um, well, he will be visiting all of our buildings, right. okay. as she mm -hmm. mentioned, right. and so he has a slide presentation that he'll mm -hmm. be presenting to the students, but then we're most excited about some time for the students to ask him some questions. Sure. Yeah. So, they'll have questions. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> and they'll be tough for questions, sure. some of them. Right? Probably. Sure. Probably. Sure. probably. Yeah. So yeah. we're very excited for them to get to meet him in mm -hmm. real life. That just, that really is something a lot of the students can't get their heads around right mm -hmm. now, that this is yeah. a real person who has created these books and, and gone through all the experiences it takes to be an author of mm -hmm. nonfiction text. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Michelle, similar to what, what's going to happen at St. Al's then? Exactly, yeah. he'll, mm -hmm. he'll be coming, um, kids will be ready with questions. And one other thing I thought of is, Every book he signed, every book for the kids. Oh my gosh! Which was wow. really amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty impressive. And it is a good point that all of you have made that meeting the actual author because they read the book and it's like, well, this is how you know. I'm sure the questions are going to be, well, how do you do this? How do you, what, where did you get the idea for that book? That kind of thing, which then, as, as you all said, gets them thinking about being creative and and she maybe helps them with their writing style if they're interested. Because I know when I when we had the one author on with the house that wasn't there, I said, well, this must be pretty difficult the whole process to come up with it's like well no it just sort of happens I mean, you look at something but I but I think it's always amazing if you can get someone to develop that creative thought process because a lot of it's just 
don't think that way. And, well, I, I, and the kids yeah, are yeah. just so, you know, mm -hmm. they are so creative and, yeah. and they have so many questions. So they will probably feed him more ideas, <laughs> you know, yeah. for like what, what two animals mm -hmm. should be, yeah. you know, positioned um, yeah. in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. And the, at the library, we do have blank books um, so the kids can come to pick up oh, a yeah. who would win and then they can make their, make own. their own. And we did make one. Um, my staff worked together to make one um, and Emma finished it but it was uh, who would win Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Unicorn. Oh. So, <laughs> oh, there's fact versus fiction. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of mingles all that Right, together, right. So come yeah. into the library and, and read because it's yeah. on close reserve. Um, <laughs> the, yeah. the book, uh, right. uh, Who Would Win? Tyrannosaurus Rex versus Unicorn. Yeah. So. You know, I think we look through the titles, and I know I can say the, the director's not going to be thrilled, but you've got, you know, whale versus shark. You've got, uh, well, here's the dinosaur, and tri uh, Triceratops versus Spinosaurus. Um, but, it, but it's interesting, though, that someone come up with two totally, like a, fic right, a fictional right. and a, yeah, to really a totally fantasy it. thing mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. an actual mm -hmm. animal. And uh, I, th I think when I look at that and you talk about this, that yeah, kids have to be intrigued by this because mm -hmm. it gets them, they're, they're not just reading, they're actually learning and they're actually mm -hmm. thinking about, oh, well, what about those two things? Mm -hmm. Maybe that would be a good book to it's, do. It's so, fun yeah. to have a yeah. book with a, a question mark in it, you mm -hmm. know, because sure. you immediately oh, yeah. start off yeah. with like, mm -hmm. hmm, possibilities. Yeah. Like, and, and, and there, there is an answer at the end. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always that one animal kills the other animal because it might be that another animal backs off. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but it is very, um, very dynamic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think the other thing that's interesting because and you, look at the, you look at the covers, you look at this, they're very attractive color-wise too because of this and you get, right away draws your attention to it. Um, but I was looking through, you know, he, he does this whole alphabet thing and some of the titles, yeah. uh, the Icky Bug County book. I mean, I, want to, I actually want to look at that and see right, what right. are the icky bugs, you and know what I mean? And how do you make all yeah. those choices for, or yeah. the military mm -hmm. ABC yeah. book, or, yeah. you know, just the, the um, yeah, just yeah. all the, a lot of nature, but also mm -hmm. um, just boating, and he's yeah. really done a lot of, a lot of research. Yeah. So. I, yeah, there's like the Marines alphabet book, the Navy alphabet book, the Army alphabet book. Um, F well, is for Fenway, which is Fenway Park in Boston, right, obviously. Right. So, so sort of some geographical history yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, just this weekend, I was at my grandkids' house, and we're looking through all their books, and my grandson pulls out the one about jets because oh. my son mm -hmm. flies jets, and uh -huh. so we're, I'm like, oh. oh my gosh, this author's right. coming to town! Right. <laughs> it's like yeah, I was yeah, so yeah, excited. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and it does make it make it really seem mm -hmm. real to people because it's like, oh, because you know, we we all get books, we read them, whether we're doing it, you know, digitally or actually have the book in our hands. But when you actually meet the person, it does give you a whole insight into how they wrote the book, and oh, right. this is this is their style, this is the way they approach things, and as you said too. It probably when they when kids ask this gentleman questions, Jerry Pilata, uh, it helps them think about how they might structure maybe not right. writing a book but doing something else. So it feeds through all those other things right. that they, they need to do educationally as well. Right. Um, and I, I know too is you know we we're, we just got a, a couple of moments here. Uh, have you already started to think about next year's book? Because I always always I, I knew that I knew that was probably the case. Sure. Yeah, sure. this isn't something that just happens like right. oh, a couple of months right. ago we decided to do this. Right. So, so yeah. Right. So what's have you? We're you're getting, we're, yeah. we're we're trying to figure out if we can do the same where we match up a book with an author visit, uh, and yeah. um, you yeah. know we'll see. You know yeah. we 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 need to find very affordable books, and then sure. we need to have the confidence that the community is mm -hmm. going to be supportive of of this project. So so far the community's been. And so supportive because they see the sure. value of it, yeah. um, and we're hoping that that we get a really good run with these. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And I noticed when I because I looked online at his website, and yeah, these books are like three ninety nine, four. It's not like you have to drop nineteen dollars, right. twenty nine right. right. ninety nine, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So they're readily accessible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just an incredible amount of information. You know, they don't mm -hmm. they don't appear to be that thick, right. but there's a ton of stuff right. in here. Right, and that's and the research yeah. and knowing yeah. then and how it, to and make it. Yeah. And it leads you to want to read the next page. That's what I, I found interesting. I'm right. kind of leafing through a little bit. It's like, oh, so what's next? You know, what's <laughs> next? What's next? And so you can just imagine with, with kids how intriguing that must be. Um, 
so just again, like uh, so the the visitor date is go through that, Kenny, and so May people 14th, don't miss it. Okay. Sunday, May fourteenth, mm -hmm. um, Mother's Day at the library, two o'clock, okay. and then the next day at all the different schools. And we're really grateful to the Marjorie Conrad Fund at the library to be able to support yeah. this. And it's Wood County District Public Library on Main 51, Street in Bowling Green, so it's it's right. easy to find right. and uh, right. yeah, beautiful right. building, lots yeah. of yeah, and yeah, that's really good. So good yeah, good place to share. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. And, and you don't just have to come on that day. You can visit. You oh can, yeah. yeah, we have yeah. a wonderful display of these. Books. Sure. So we yeah. come to the library and pick out all the Jerry books and um, and then other books that are similar to this mm -hmm. series we yeah. have yeah. because other people have figured out that this is a really um, mm -hmm. clever way to share right. you know information. Well, the one thing and a, a shameless plug, but it reminded me of that we have a series called Wild Kratts, and it yes. kind of taught, it, it's yes. so much similar yes. to that only exactly. in yeah. So exactly. it's the same sort of approach, but yes. obviously yes. in print Fun. versus yes. versus yes. video. Yes. So yeah, that's a wonderful Good. series. Great, great. Well, uh, Michelle Rogers, Stacy Higgins, Marie. Maria Simone, thank, thank you so you. much for being here and uh, much success with this. Great thing for the community, great thing for kids and families. I mean, everybody, it's, it's yes. a win all the way around for people. Right. So appreciate you guys assembling us and doing it and uh, come back next year when this is, you know, what's, we'll do this again and we can, because uh, yeah, sure. it's always, thank it's you. always educational for me, if nothing else. So it's always a good thing. So you can check us out at WBGU.org. You can watch us every Thursday night at eight o'clock on WBGU PBS. We will see you again next time. Good night and good luck.